It's recording now. So, welcome. Welcome to the CBOR Working Group First Interim since ITF 104. Uh, this is an official ITF meeting. The note well applies. Um, yes. Uh, Kasten, do you have any slides prepared? So I can pass you the ball or? No, unfortunately, not at all. Okay. So we, we can still look at the issues if we want to. Yeah, of course. I can give you the presenter. Yes, so on the agenda today, um, Kasten wanted to bring up some uh, a point that came uh, from um, for CDDL. And then on the agenda, there was the CBOR specification, status update, and issue discussion, and CBOR array tag update and issue discussion. And then we should talk a little bit about the charter that was posted in the mailing list. So, yes, um, about CDDL. Yeah, so what, what um, happened is that uh, some, some, some time late in the process, uh, we got a request to put in hexadecimal floats. And uh, as a literal notation, and that kind of seemed simple because literal floats, we just had to steal the definition from the C language uh, standard or from the C++ language standard. And we did that and uh, we thought we were done and actually uh, a few tests ran through and so on. So everything looked great. Uh, but uh, a couple of uh, days ago, uh, a guy called Daniel that, that I haven't met uh, noticed that uh, we didn't put in a way to express negative uh, hex floats. Um, and uh, it actually turns out in, in the C language, literals are always unsigned because to get a negative constant, you build a constant expression with a unary minus and a literal. Uh, so th that was an oversight when, when we just copied that over. We, we didn't consider that we don't have a unary minus uh, in, in CDDL. So that needs to be added uh, back. And um, I, I made a proposal on, on the mailing list and uh, Daniel confirmed that it would be solving his uh, problem. And I think that that's all that needs to be done. Uh, but of course we would, should be very careful uh, with uh, making uh, changes at this point. So I just wanted to verify that other people have seen that change. Hex floats may not your, be your favorite uh, literal type, uh, but uh, we have to get this, this one right as well. So has anybody seen this mail on the mailing list? I have not. If we hadn't actually done literal floats, I wouldn't worry about it. But since we have, I think we need to get this fixed. And I, when I looked at that, I didn't have any problems with fixing that in Auth 48. Yeah, I just pasted the the line to the the Etherpad. If you if you're seeing the Etherpad, um, can someone share the Etherpad? I think that would be useful. Well, you've got the ball at the moment. I do, uh, which means I need to find out how to do this. Oh. Jim, is your raised hand voluntary or? Oh, no, it's, do I actually have a raised hand? You did not anymore. Now you do. Okay, it's, it, it looks backwards. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> WebEx has this interesting property that you can share applications but not Windows, uh, which is weird. Uh, excuse me. I'm not sure. I'm yeah, it's a new it's a new feature in the sharing. You can share a single tab. Um, other other 
other systems had it for a while. It's kind of cool because you no longer have to have that tab as the topmost tab. You can share a tab? You can share a tab. And it doesn't have to be visible, which is kind of cool. Sorry, that was me. I was just trying that out. It was working. <laughs> so it sounds like we're just all unanimous that hex float should just be fixed. Yeah, I'm not hearing okay. any objections. Yeah. Yep. So just go ahead and, and send a note to the RSC editor with a CC to the list and to the AD. Yeah, the list has been notified anyway. Um, right, but I want them to know that we're actually fixing it in Office 48. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, first I'm sending it to the AD. I need to send to the list as well. Right. <laughs> okay. We do. So I think we're done with that item. Yeah, let's move to Seabor specification. And um, basically, I, 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 I sent you, you seen my email. Yes. Um, and that was basically taken from the minutes from that meeting. And it was the list of APs. So you hope you have time to check some of those or see what's missing and we can discuss what's What's not? Yeah. But Paul has started to to make some some pull requests uh, for some of the, the issues, and I haven't had a chance to actually look at those review those. So this will happen next, uh, but I think at this point in time, uh, very little has happened on the CBIS uh, specification. So I'm not sure that we have much to discuss at this point. Okay. Uh, at least we. Uh, you might have seen that I uh, pinged the working group. There was an IP uh, on uh, everybody to check that the the the, the appendix C. And, and Lawrence, thanks for checking that. He uh, he replied saying that it seemed good to him. So uh, we have at least one comment about that. So is there anything you, you'd like to get uh, working group discussion on today, Kasten, or do you think it's just implementing? You have a pretty clear idea and it just needs to be implemented. I think right now it just needs to be implemented. I might okay. come up with some questions uh, later, so um, I'm pretty sure we will have lots of material for the next interim, uh, but not, not at this one. Okay. Yeah, I did a fast review through the four issues that Paul came in. The only comment that I had was an, was a, a, something that apparently Markdown does automatically, which is to add RSC2119 if you ask for the boilerplate which was interesting. So when I looked at those, they all looked straightforward. The boilerplate automatically includes normative references to 2119 and 80, whatever it is. Um, so the, the additional uh, entry in, in the list was uh, redundant and created a warning. That's why Paul <laughs> removed that. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, my request would be to, to please pay attention because in the next two weeks, I will have time to actually work on this, probably this week already, and uh, we'll make some progress. Yeah, I also wanted to point out about the issue discussion that 
that basically meant the issue opened after the ATS, uh, the last ATS, which are which were uh, numbers 63 and forward. Um, so there has been, yeah, Paul has answered to some of these. But there has been no discussion. I mean, they, I think some of them are uh, raised because of the discussion at the ATF 104. But yeah, just let me sure that we agree on how to solve this as well. Yeah, I think this uh, thing can fix pretty easily. Well, that's a good question. Um, but Jeffrey, how we handle the INA considerations of the updated. Uh, uh, document. So I think the the idea is that the the currently the INA consideration says uh, INA is requested to blah blah blah, and uh, instead it probably should now so, uh, now say uh, INA has. And there was a recent discussion about document evolution on, on how to do IANA consideration sections for for documents that are being updated. Uh, and uh, probably the best thing is to start the IANA considerations with things that IANA sh should be doing now. So we could re just refer to 1749 or maybe update some information in there and echo it. Um, but uh, the, the INA considerations really are about things that IANA needs to do now. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. We just have to make sure that, that we don't lose information. Uh, uh, yeah, by, I guess you don't, you don't want the updated document to, to have, yeah, to have the <laughs> ask IANA to register the same things. No, but sense. you also don't want to have a normative reference to, to your document. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a bit of an editorial uh, busy work, but uh, that has to be done. Yeah. OK. So then go? let's see that, that the AP for, for Seabor is uh, to get update for hopefully next interim or partially update or solve some of these issues. So the, 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 the to-do list is the one from uh, the one that I sent to you, so the one from the minutes, and then additionally the issues that have been created since. That should cover it all. Right. And uh, the only question maybe is, uh, does it make sense to uh, resubmit a version a couple of days before the interim, or do we work out of the GitHub? Um, I don't know what the working group prefers. For me, it's like it doesn't, it, GitHub works fine. That if people have other opinions. I mean, there, if as you prefer, I guess there's no. Um, no problem with submitting but if we need to discuss the changes maybe it's better to keep it in the github right, uh, right. 
Okay, so essentially, uh, Paul and I are um, uh, making the decision whether to put in a new uh, version. Um, so if, if we think we just have executed on, on uh, existing input, uh, we, we probably will submit a new version. And if we think there is a discussion to be had, uh, we will work out of the GitHub. That sounds good. So we can move on to the next item, CBOR rate tag. Right. And th there were uh, like 10 issues that um, I think all were editorial, but, but including a few additions to the security considerations. Um, let me just pull up. Issues. Uh, what, whatever the exclamation marks they mean. Yeah, so much, much of this was about the late edition of the tag 1040, and uh, I think we had now better uh, solutions uh, for that. Um, I think we, we also pointed out that multi-dimensional arrays do not need to be typed arrays. Uh, there were some reference updates that were required. Um, I put a little bit of text on clamped arrays. So if, if you care about that, um, th there was the question of why, why, why would you even put this tag in there? And the answer is uh, to allow round tripping of, of typed arrays uh, from JavaScript to uh, Cbor and, and uh, back. And I, I wrote some text about that. I didn't feel able to, to actually do anything about Jeffrey's request for use case for homogeneous arrays because I think the text is already in there. Um, so at the start of section three and uh, uh, of uh, section 3.2, there, there already is uh, a text, so I wasn't quite clear what what to uh, do there. So this is the only issue that is uh, still open. Um, yeah, perf explain the performance improvements. Mm -hmm and explain that we are saving space as well. Uh, say that we don't have a preferred encoding um, and the security conservation for homogeneous arrays that uh, Jim asked for. And I think we also have covered the editorial uh, ones. I made the mistake of having six of them in one issue. I think I kicked them all off. So, um, from my point of view, uh, I think we are ready maybe with a little confirmation from uh, Jeffrey that we actually can close his uh, issue uh, without uh, a change. Yeah, and it would be good if all the reviewers, which should be Jim and Jeffrey, and I think Lauren had some comments as well. They're satisfied with the, with the output. Um, oh, I can see the build is failing. That might be a... Interesting. Uh, so we would check the diff with the, with the draft and not with the... Yeah, so the, the draft is submitted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at some point I will find out. I get these errors uh, now and then, and I have no idea when. Uh, maybe I just have to update the library or something like that. I will find out what. Yeah. What is. Okay, that's fine.
So yeah, um, so I will uh, start shepherding this document. And uh, I think now we, I will just make sure that every, like the reviewers are, the working group is happy with it and then we can move forward with it. Great. Always so that it on this, unless anybody wants to say anything, we can move on to the charter. Yeah, okay. So, as you might have seen, Jim posted a proposal for a charter, and Kasten, you had one comment. To it, Jim replied, were you happy with the reply with the proposal or? Uh, actually, I must admit, I, this week I haven't really had time to do anything about this. Okay, so let's just take this out. So let's see, where was that? I can share my screen and show. Then I can all take notes. But <laughs> well, I just pasted the the charter into the. Okay, great. Uh, including the change, so custom no, was I saying. No, I did not put my change in. I was just, I was just going to go find it. Yeah, the, the 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 change was there are a number of additional keyboard tag types instead of extensions to keyboard types. Uh, so here, let's see. It's slightly more uh, lighter. <laughs> Let's do it pink so you can see. Interesting shade of pink. <laughs> The first one that came, I didn't need <laughs> much attention. <laughs> Better? Thank you. So, um... Yeah, I think we, we, the, the message I was trying to, to give was that um, I think we have to be a bit careful with using the term extension. Uh, because th there are some people who who like other uh, encodings and and are telling people the CBO people are completely revising the document and uh, changing everything and uh, putting in lots of extensions so it's all unstable and so on. Uh, so we just mm -hmm. have to make sure that in our messaging we we are not uh, nourishing this. Yeah. I think uh, I think that uh, specifying seaboard tag types or so we do something like that. So we just say we get rid of extensions every place and just use tags types. Right. Or new tags. We could just say new tags. I have I have um two questions about the charter. Um, yeah. And maybe one is a technical, and then I maybe have a technical question about I think what you just said. Um, the the first part is so this is exciting that uh, the plan is to change to that the revision of seventy forty nine uh, is going to full standard. Um, that's that's kind of really uh, interesting. Um, I don't think we started that work yet, if I'm not mistaken, right? We did. That that has actually been part of the charter from the start. Started, but we haven't done that yet. Okay, so but we're in the process of of doing that. Um, so is is the the first version of CDDL has been published as RFC XXX because it's still in the queue at this point. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, if, if if needed, I could actually go get an RFC number at this point. That, that's not important. You could just put a period after. Uh, will have been published or whatever. Um, uh, um, so, so I think the question is, um, 
whether or not the, the revision of CDDL is intended to be uh, a full st internet standard. No. Okay. Um, that might be important to put in there. Um, is it intended to de depend upon uh, 7049 BIS? Most likely, yes. Um, so we, we have fixed some terminology that, that really would be useful to uh, use. I mean, th there will be no technical dependencies because we are not really making technical changes. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the, the, I think we have fixed some things like really understanding what the difference between well-formed and, and valid is and so on. Uh, that I think are, are useful terminology pieces to have in in the next version of CDDS. Is there a is there a is there a mechanism in or an intention to have a mechanism in the next rev of CDDL such that you could indicate or whether or not you needed 7049 or sorry you could tolerate 7049 or whether you needed 7049 bis. There is no technical difference, so that that is not. Yes, I know. I realize that's probably the answer, right? There's no technical difference, right? So mm -hmm. this shouldn't be an issue. We should be able to use the latest CDL, CDDL to describe uh, uh, a, a thing which is acceptable to a 7049 only parser, even if we believe the 7049 only parser could cope with a 7049 bis content, right? Well, again, th there are no changes. So if, if you have something that, that is 7049 and is not accepted by, by a 7049 parser, uh, that's a bug. I, I think it might be worth um, explaining this in a paragraph in the charter so that, that people coming to this don't think there's something else happening. Um, my my view about CDDL has been that it doesn't matter because um, when I write a document, I reference CDDL version A or B or C. That that it doesn't that I never I never I'm going to upgrade my I I don't need to be compatible with a new version of CDDL because my document hasn't been revised right. So yeah, so it's always it out directly that is that is that is a little bit redundant but maybe it's it's so obvious that some people don't see it it's so um, obvious yeah so so and and it's not the case as far as i can understand because uh, in the asn1 world um the the there are people do are producing code with asn1 and it's the preferred way to do things and at this point, people are not producing code with CDDL. Not that they couldn't, but people aren't. As such, the the document spec, the CDDL document, is really being interpreted by humans who have read a particular spec that says, "Go read this version of CDDL to understand how this CBOR works." Right? Yes, but uh, there's no. We are not married to the state, so if, if no, people come but, up but with co generators, we the should point be able is that, to find them. The point is that if there's a new CDDL version comes out and my RFC doesn't need a revision to point to the new one, because it's perfectly fine if it points to the old one, because it's a perfectly good description of what was on the wire. Yeah, and it will never change. And it will never change and until I revise. Be, yeah. And it, I, for it to change, I have to revise my document and say I'm using something new. And if and even when I do that, I could still point to the old CDDL, and I think that's really powerful. And I think it's subtle that people who are used to network protocols changing underneath them uh, is don't know. Um, the the technical question I had was whether there was any interest or whether this is out of scope for someone to say there should be some kind of an indicator or tag. At the beginning of a seed or uh, uh, block, which which warned if there were newer stuff from a newer revision uh, there, but if it really is all no technical changes, then there should never be an issue. Well, we have well-defined extension points, and one of those, of course, is the the tags. The tags, so, yes. Uh, you might sprinkle new tags all over the place. 
um, and and people do uh, occasionally ask whether there should be something like a prologue uh, to to a SIBO data item that says which tags are being used and so on. And uh, so th this is something that can be discussed. Um, but uh, I think it's it's actually not worth doing that. So I, I grew up with with SGML and and this incredibly complicated document prologue yep. uh, that described everything that was going on in that document, and that that was thrown out for XML because it turned out it was mostly not useful. The only thing that uh, was remaining was the character encoding, and that also has been overtaken by events now. Yeah, so I tend to agree with you, and and so um, at some point, at some document, we may want to write what you just said down, mm -hmm. avoid re just rehashing it over and over again. Um, uh, it maybe doesn't belong in the charter as being out of scope, but I, it, I mean, it sounds to me like what we may want to actually put in the charter is that. CDDL version two will consume and, and and would produce exactly the same output as CDDL one for all current CDDL one input. That is the intention. I wouldn't want to. That, that would be my intention too. I wouldn't want to completely rule out that at some point we find a bug that needs to be fixed. But that probably will come in the form of an ambiguity and not in the form of uh, uh, something we we deliberately change. So so it is a subtlety because we're not this CDDL two is not going to full standard. So we would normally remove bugs and stuff like that for sure when we went to full standard. So maybe we don't have to worry about that. Well, I mean, we can't take CDDL2 to full standard because we're going to add new features. Yes. It would be a third document is what I'm trying to say. You'd have to revise it again to remove a bug, but you're saying that we might remove a bug in CDDL1 in CDDL2. Yes. I don't know of any, but uh, I'm, I'm old enough to know that we might have. Well, we know of one, but we're fixing it. <laughs> Um, just to highlight this, and it might be redundant, um, some people are uh, afraid of the uh, post, uh, suffix biz. So people that don't really understand the process but see the biz saying it's changing now, I'm not using it. So that was some unfortunate feedback I got over the time last month. And um, may maybe putting that disclaimer into a charter is somehow not the purpose of a charter, but it might not hurt. Putting we don't need to talk about CDDL this. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm just going, we're talking about changes to existing stuff. Uh, that, that, that's the general topic. So CDDL is clear, I think, and CBOR should be super clear, but it is not to people. So the assumption that people get this is maybe wrong <laughs> and, and, and on a general basis. So uh, most but, but we probably, talk about, but some don't. Yeah. We do talk about the first version and now it is like progressing Again. the second version. I understand. That... So, so maybe we, instead of saying the first version of CDDL, we actually ought to say CDDL 1.0 um, or something or A or but, 2000. But, 16 or maybe the second document is a CDD extension document. I don't know. Um, Carsten is probably uh, also a very uh, knowledgeable in this field. I just wanted to highlight that yeah, of course. only because I'm there will not be like... changes, that's a problem. Uh, people yeah, think there are changes, like... and this, sorry. No, no, I'm just wondering how can we highlight that uh, in, in the like, how, what changes would that require in the current text? I, I understand what you're saying. I think the, the important observation is that there's a different level of guarantee here between CBOR and, and uh, uh, CDDA. So we are not going to change uh, uh, CBOR. We um, will extend CDL. And uh, given that essentially since March 2015, uh, CDL has not 
changed. It has only been extended, but old specifications stayed valid. Uh, we would like to continue <laughs> this. So, so let let me come back to the 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 the, ver the name and 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 maybe you want to put a 1.0 in the title uh, or something else in the title. Um, so so let let me ask and, and that will be clear when I ask this part question. The revision of the CDDL document. Will it update or obsolete the first document? Yes. So at some point, three. But yeah. We... So the problem with that statement is that means that somebody who is doing another document that has referenced the first version of CDDL, and I would rather call it CDDL one or something, um, is going to get a nit and our other thing that says, "Oh, that document is up obsolete. You should be referencing the new version." And you say, "No, because my." my specification hasn't changed and my use of CDDL hasn't changed and uh, I'm not using any of the extensions and in fact I'm doing a BIS document on my original document so I don't want CDDL to change underneath me and I think we agree that that's a, a perfectly acceptable thing right yeah so if we compare this with the evolution of Yang yeah um, RFC 6020 has the title Yang, a data modeling language for the network configuration protocol. There are some 1.0 sprinkled over that document at some point, but it really is quiet about that. And then of course there is RFC 7950, um, which has the title the Yang 1.1 data modeling language. Right, and we never called it 1.0 before, right? Yes. <laughs> right, so that's all the really I'm suggesting is maybe we want to sprinkle the word 1.0 into the title there so that someone looking for it can say, yeah. oh, okay. Um, but that, that essentially reinforces uh, uh, preliminariness of the thing. Uh, okay. that you put I a mean, year in. So Yang 1.1 really has substantial changes from 1.0. Right. So I'm not sure that, that we will do that in CDDL to the same extent. We will, we will certainly add things to it, and we might clarify some uh, uh, things, but uh, the, the level of, of uh, freedom that, that people felt they have in doing 1.1, Yang 1.1, uh, that that's not really something that that we think we have. Fair enough. So what about if you called it CDDL 2019? Oh, that that even further underscores the preliminariness. Um, you think so? Okay. If if you know how ECMAScript works, yeah, well, you get the point. right impression. If you don't, <laughs> you get a very different. Well, but the IEEE's num your numbering is the opposite. How? Well, because they tend to, you have a, a very stable specification, a bunch of extensions, and then all the extensions get rolled into the new specification with a new year number, and you now know that one is extremely stable, right? Yeah. Okay, it's got everything. You don't have to go to any other documents. It's all wrapped together. Everything's good. So at that level, I think that, that the opposite feeling, you know, Especially, especially when the document you're referencing is six years old or something like that, you feel like, oh, okay, we're still using that document. It must be really stable. All right, but I don't think the intention with CDDL is to roll everything in because we've got an IANA registry for extension points. Uh, fair enough, right? I'm, I'm all I'm trying to do is trying to get away from, from, um. People not learn it in the state of in the art of CDDL, thinking that they have to go what Hank just said. They have to go to the latest one, or afraid to go to the latest one. Okay, uh, not really understanding that this is a different. There's a different relationship here. Um, but anyway, that, that's a part of uh, of the introduction or of CDDL too. Yes, I think Michael has a really good point that you you really when you do something that that's uh, supposed to last for a decade or two uh, you really have to express it uh, have to be explicit about the way you plan to to evolve this and i think that that's really an item that we should explicitly put into the charter that we will 
write this up. Yes, exactly. You, you captured it way Sorry. better than I did. Then we will write this up. Could you, what, what do you mean? So part of the, the, the work that the working group does uh, is formalizing uh, the approach we take to evolving this document or this specification mm -hmm. or this ecosystem, actually, because it, it probably will not be a single specification at some point. Okay, can you give me some text? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That. Um, like how would you formulate that, though? Yeah, approximately like I just said it. So I really think the charter should say CDDL1 rather than the first version, <laughs> if you're going to call the next one CDDL2. Uh, Michael, I, I don't know if you have heard my rant about version numbers. I have. So I don't care, but you're the one that called it CDDL2. So if you want to call it, call it, you have to call it something else then. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I really believe in features as opposed to version numbers. So I think CDDL will get new features. And uh, you are right, at some point we will roll up, roll up some of those into a new document. And uh, to be able to, to talk about this, uh, it may be useful to have something like a CDDL 2.0 Monica uh, but the, the approach, I, I think, really should be about uh, adding features. So at some point, we're going to then talk about CDDL-RFC 83400 or something, right? Yes. Okay. And, and, that's okay. and I'm okay with that. Um, uh, then how about... Um, um, why not? Sorry, for dropping. Why not use the term feature if you like it so much? Because I like yeah. it too somehow. Well, it's already there. So what, yeah. what about what about this? You just cross out first version of CDDL. Oh. That's fine. That way, that way, there's no version in the charter, and and then we're happy. There's still a version. While this version has been completed. <laughs> but addition. addition. Sorry. Edition. Edition. Now we are getting going into Microsoft uh, terminology. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Pascal Pascal has blazed this as as in six tish as as you know the architecture has many editions and Got, we, got, we got majorly pushed back on that, although I thought it was a good idea. Um, so, so let's not put it in. If, <laughs> uh, no, it has been completed, so it's okay. We can just call it a specification. Sure. Yeah. That's good. And the rest is about, is about features, in, which is what you want, right? So, yeah. The working group will collect these features as well as other features raised by the UC evaluate utility and at a second uh, something. Edition. <laughs> sure. I like it. <laughs> okay. Because I think that makes it clear that it's not a it's not a we're not replacing we're not obsoleting, we're not replacing. And I think that's the the message we want to send is if you if you if if you implemented CDDL eighty four thirty four or whatever, you're good. You don't need to change. So 
So now we have completely moved to editions. So that, that was a really useful point you brought up there, Michael. Thank you. If we want to say do we want to add that? Because we are saying with it, we are basically saying that unlike IEEE, people can define extensions which are not going to be part of additions. Yes. Well, we've already added extension points. Yes, further. Right. So we don't really have a good name for, if, if the extension point is a socket, we, we don't have a good name for the plugs. I mean, calling them extensions is correct, but it, it misses the fact that these are extensions that are designed to plug into an extension point. Oh, I wasn't thinking of sockets. I was thinking in terms of constraints. Only you don't call them constraints. But the, the sockets have constraints, obviously. Okay, are we missing anything that we said we, that, that we want to do? I, th or I think we've covered everything that the working group has said it wants to do. Um, only the most obvious thing that I don't think is necessary to put in is that the, uh, like, like Michael said, um, if I wrote a CDDL, it will not be impacted by the creation of a new CDDL document. There's no danger, there are no dragons. This is well, not... We, have, right, we, well, we basically can have the discussion as to whether or not we want to say it obsoletes or not as part of the new document. No, maybe, probably, yeah. Yeah, I think what, what Hank is essentially saying is that uh, we we might want to mention the fact that we consider the, the body of existing CDDL specifications to be precious, and we will try not to endanger them or to damage their value. That's That's a good thing to say. Is this uh, linked to what we said before about um, maybe not that CDDL two would consume and produce the same output as CDDL one, or is that more? Well, th this is really more more specific about what we are trying to achieve. Because our goal is not to yeah. not make changes. Our goal is to make sure that this body of work uh, can can proceed in a useful way. And I mm -hmm. think it's always good to to actually 
say what you want to achieve as opposed as opposed to sure. focusing on how you achieve it. Yeah, but a consequence of that is what we said before then. Yes, but it, it modulates the details of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if we cover if we cover that point with this addition. Or do we need to add something more? Well, I just wrote a sentence. Did you see that? Yes. So attempt is too weak, I think. It's nice wishy-washy text. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we can still bash it a bit, but uh, I think that it's important to have this um, this mentioned, and we can refine it, of course. But uh, this is the, the addressing the fear people sometimes have, and that it's much hesitant to 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 uh, engage more. I'm just confused why it's uh, to develop specifications plural. Oh, CDDL specifications. Uh, I'm not talking about the specification of CDDL. I'm talking about specifications in CDDL. It's data definition. Uh, yeah. Ah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good point, thank you. That's it's even better, yeah. So good point. Okay, so so then I understand that we're still missing the point that we were discussing before or some text about what we were discussing before. Uh, like if you look at the notes below. I was trying to capture the conversation. Um, Jim, you you had yeah thing you said about. I think the point is that uh, CDDL two would not alter. CDDL one, which is kind of what we cover here. I don't know if it's completely. Yeah, covered, I, I, I think what I think what is there is is sufficient to cover that point. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, so we we'll go ahead and republish. List. We'll go ahead and republish this to the list, um, and basically give people a two week. Review period. We'll put it on the on agenda again the, the next meeting, and if we don't get any updates, then we'll push it to the uh, AD. Does that sound reasonable? Sounds good to me. And talking about uh, two weeks, um, Kasten, you had maybe some vacation planned or something. Are you going to be? Oh. Available. No. Um, there is an IAB workshop in Helsinki on June fifth. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> of course. That should have ended by that time. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I can do this from the airport.
And I am not okay. entirely sure how this works because the the, the actual I B meeting is not not actually in Helsinki. It's uh, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and um, I, I don't know how the transport will be organized and and all that. Okay. I think that we need you to to tell us about like if we can have a meeting anyway and discuss charter etc. But for all the documents. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that I can call in, but I may not have the best infrastructure available. Okay. Because it, it's uh, this will be 6 p.m. Helsinki time. Yeah. You're not on a plane anyway. Yet. I'm I'm on a plane at nine. Okay. Okay, thank you, time. Uh, okay, let's let's try, and if you can make it, please uh, let us know. And uh, yeah, as, as soon as I know more about how how the the arrangements will be, I I will tell you. Yeah, sounds good. So I stop the recording now. Thank and you.